Hello guys, so welcome to the course. Um, I'm extremely happy to have you here. Uh, the reason I'm happy is that you have joined in a very short interval. And uh, thank you for being a part of this community. This is something, this teaching this course is very special to me because machine learning is knowing the understanding, the fundamentals and the foundations of machine, machine learning and data science is and will be a very good prerequisite for the next five, 10 years, given the situation, the whole, how the world is changing today. I have put a lot into this course. Uh, like I have been planning this course for a long time, for quite a long time, and this is finally happening. I'm very happy. A credit goes to a part of, a part of the great IIC giving out the course syllabus because it really, really, really right at you on your face that, you know, this is the right time to start because courses are coming up. So I think therefore this course will be absolutely, you know, very important for the students out. However, uh, as you've understood from the syllabus of the gate, uh, AI ML syllabus that we have seen, probability statistics and mathematics is really required in very vast details so there is probability there is probability in real depth uh, and there is a bit of statistics there is a really good depth of linear algebra and calculus and optimization People have requested me to teach the uh, probability and statistics course. However, I'm not sure about it. It will require a lot of time. And um, you know, we, I have already made the course out there. So it will be really unnecessary to make the course again for just a new, you know, a new group on cohort. So therefore, I have focused mainly on the machine learning part and how it will be applied here. This course will assume that you know these details, these fundamentals well enough to understand it. However, I will try to explain certain things that if you don't know, fundamental to this understanding of machine learning. So what is the agenda of today's class? The first, when you start, you know, understand or start learning, start you start your journey of machine learning you should first understand what machine learning is all about and what type of different machine learning algorithms are there i've already done a course on data visualization if you already don't know uh, but there i have dragged it a bit more like the philosophy of data and philosophy of machine learning i will not do that in this course i will right away go into the fundamentals of machine learning what in learning and how a lot of the types of machine learning the biggest takeaway that you can take from today's class is I will explain that how probability mathematics statistics is required for machine learning and how statistics is very different from machine learning or is it really different? What are the common points between that? What are not the common points between that? And the class may go over one hour. So uh, if you stay over one hour with the class, so thank you beforehand. Let's get started. So what is machine learning? Machine learning is nothing but you are making a machine learn. You are making a machine learn, simple. But this is a different kind of learning. Or is it? Like, how exactly do we learn if we understand what is machine learning? How exactly do we learn? Rather, what is human learning? If you, if you remember the time you were taught the fundamentals of alphabets, how did you, how did your parents teach that? If you remember that your parents showed you, let's say different symbols of A, okay, like this, or like this. And then they asked you to replicate that, like son or daughter, please write A. And therefore you try to replicate that like, like this. And then you slowly increased, okay? Made it better. That's exactly how you learned. So 
the idea of data learning from data so this is the picture the picture is the data and this is a the i the letter a that is the output you're learning so now if i say write letter a you will probably try to replicate that data the closest possible expression of that so this is exactly what is data and you're learning from it okay here the machine what is the machine the machine is your mind your brain and you're learning from the data now computer scientists and statisticians and all the scientists so they wanted to make a second brain like a second brain outside your own brain can we teach this to a computer can we teach this like what is a and what is not a rather it can be expressed in a very different form like can the question is that can we teach or make a computer learn from data learn what learn pattern you are essentially finding a pattern so you think you're trying to make a computer learn the pattern from data so this is essentially machine learning simple words any doubts out there guys i hope you understood if you can understand please give a thumbs up out there so you're making a computer learn pattern from data when you started learning machine you know when you started learning it yourself it was your brain the machine the computer was your machine it was super computer your brain but now you are trying to make a computer learn from the data now this is a very big difference so there is a very big fundamental philosophical difference this is this that there's a difference between learning and instructions because i will give you a very good example two good examples there's a very big difference between learning and instructions what is the difference the difference is the following okay let me give you an example first let's say you want let's say okay let me go to the next page learning versus instruction this is very important because this is where the difference of i will tell you where it's important to understand so there is a road let's say like this here is your starting point you start you start here here is end now you are teaching a machine to go from start to end now can you tell me how will you teach it to the machine let's say this is 10 meter this is 10 meter this is 10 meter can someone say that how will you so here is the face of the machine by giving instructions yeah can you give the instructions say the example of the instructions go left after 10 meters go right after 10 meters further more exactly so the instructions can be straight for 10 meters then left for 10 meters then right for 10 meters right but where exactly is the learning here you're giving instructions but there is no learning right so this is different between instructions and learning what do you do for learning is that you probably show the person like you probably i can show... i can tell it but uh, uh, okay, okay wait 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 hello wait wait okay. wait, wait, wait yeah you're shouting i mean probably you don't know like you are close to the mic yeah can you please write down in the text interest
Okay. So there's a very big difference between the stuff, you know, this instructions and data. Now, what do you show for so the difference between instructions and data is the following. So now there is a machine out there or a kid out here. Let's example, let's take the example of a kid. Why I'm taking an example of a kid? Because example, like kid is a perfect example of I can I I I I, I. This is a perfect example of a brain, a machine, which is not, which doesn't have enough data. Okay. So you put in the data into the system. So you make a kid watch that make different, show the kid different parts like this. Like show different parts out there of different kids, how other kids move. They like, they cannot walk straight. So you make the kid watch other kids move in that direction and the kid automatically the brain automatically learns a pattern so you are not giving straight instructions probably the kid will learn that to go like this not in a perfect straight line but the kid will learn to go to reach it probably it's not optimized but the kid will learn so this is the difference this is the difference between learning and instructions did you get uh, get the difference guys this is instructions which is learning like another can, example can be the mother or the father holds the hand of the student and just draw it out perfectly that is instructions but if you show the kid different examples and then ask the kid to replicate that is learning did you understand guys all of you how is it better than instructions? Yeah, this is a very good question. How is it better than instructions? Very good question, Yashraj. For complicated problems, you cannot really give the instructions. Probably you do not know the instructions. Like, do you exactly teach a person, like instruct properly every single step how to drive a car? Or can you really instruct properly every single step out there how to swim? Can you like for complicated problems, therefore learning is better than instructions. Are you getting the difference for complicated problems? Like, can you teach something where it's very, not very mathematically well-defined. You can only teach. So this instructions is nothing but a set of mathematical equations, right? Yashraj. So where you cannot really mathematically model it, where you cannot mathematically, you know, you do not have mathematical function out there. That is exactly where learning is required more. And that's exactly where all these different exotic machine learning algorithms come up. And that's why deep learning is very successful right now, because that is a very good approximation to an unknown, any unknown function. You can prove it. Are you getting the difference guys that what is the very fundamental difference between instructions and learning and why learning is more can solve the problem in a fundamental way than instructions because to see the instructions you need to know the instructions but often people really do not have the clarity about the instructions for easy things it can therefore for easy things when machine learning and statistics just came they were just basic functions like where you can really define and as it progressed the problem the application became more and more complex the the wild worldwide problems that needed data that needed this modeling became more and more complex and that's why more and more complex and more fundamental models came am i making sense guys Did you understand what is the difference between learning and instructions any doubts out here i would love to clarify this is very important now why i'm saying this because this was a very big difference so i will tell you i started my statistics and data journey so I was a cricketer and I used to love to play cricket, but I have to leave cricket in the middle of my, because I have to pursue mathematics and statistics. So, and I, I really wanted to pursue mathematics, not statistics. Okay. Because I really don't know what was statistics all about. And the way it was taught in my school, it was horrible. Like it, there was 11, 11, 12, I had statistics in my school curriculum. So I thought that, okay, if I'm going to learn statistics, at ISI, then 
I will only apply it on cricket. Now, in the first year, my project was on measuring the performance of captains. I did the project myself. And recently, I am now doing a personal project with a few people out there. And their the goal is to build an, a, an AI captain who will automatically decide which, like based on the whole situation, the game situation, the the captain will the AI captain, the artificial intelligent captain automatically decide which bowler should ball next for the maximum impact. Okay, this is the problem we are solving. Now, here when we are solving the problem, there are two kinds of mindsets that are coming up. One is okay, if the you know it's we are trying to give instructions because since I am a cricketer, I know the instructions. Okay, I know okay, if the batsman does this then the bowler should do this so there was a mindset change that so that's exactly when i learned the difference between instructions and database learning when you're database learning you should put in the entire data and let the model learn what it comes out to be and then tweak in the parameters and changes later on but me having the domain knowledge is trying to incorporate the instructions out there okay so this is a difference between instructions and learning the two different school of thoughts and this is exactly where the new research of machine learning and deep learning is going. It's called physics inspired neural networks and all these things where both instructions and this deep neural network, all these exotic machine learning models will be working together for a specific domain. Because when you do this, just this algorithm based, it has no interpretation. But when you have this instruction, you do the interpretation. So the next plethora of research will be in this direction and you will be seeing it more coming it will be more domain specific that how instructions and learning will come together and this that's why i'm trying to make it very clear to you guys that these are very two different aspects of learning it yourself and applications also because when you will deal with real life data and you have a lot of domain knowledge it you will try to instruct it more than make it learn right this is the difference. Okay. So all of you understood the difference. All of you understood what is machine learning and what is the difference between instructions and learning. Yes or no? I want a hand, you know, thumbs up. Or you can write yes in the comment box, whatever works for you. No, no, no. You're that there is no better or right. Okay. There is nothing called better or it's a different way i mean if even after learning you do not learn the right thing or you learn the right thing with the wrong concept then you need instructions right that's exactly where machine learning comes up like a machine learns how to self-drive a car but a machine doesn't understand the difference between a tree or a dustbin and a person, human being. So let's say, due to some reason, due after a storm on a, you know, on a, a road, there are a, a big dustbin has been put up like that by the wind, and it has it it has settled there. So the machine will stop there, assuming it's a pedestrian, and the car will not move ahead because it has no interpretation, right? And that exactly where the difference of learning and instruction comes. Then exactly where you need to instruct that, oh, that is not a car. That is not a human being. So you can turn around and move ahead. You can take over. Am I making sense? So both learning and instruct. So what I mean is that learning will probably give a good interpretation. Interpretation can only be given by instructions because interpretation is human. Interpretation is something that is very core to human, right? The interpretation should be, an alien shouldn't be able to interpret it, but a human should be able to interpret. So human, the, the interpretation, the language of interpretation should be the language of human beings. And therefore, to make it the language of human beings, human beings should instruct how it should be, right? To make it interpretable to themselves. Am I making sense, guys? Are you understanding? That instruction should always be given by human beings, not machines. Learning should be done by the machine. Instruction should be given by the human being. And that's where a both interpretable and a good, great working model will work. And that's exactly where the research is going next. That's exactly what I told. 
is it okay so i hope uh, rahul's doubt and others doubts are clear okay anil's doubt is is it right to think that we use learning to come up with optimized instructions yes it's trying to so for example in this the child doesn't learn the straight path right but it approximates you're right but what i mean is that it's trying to approximate it, but instructions in more than that instructions is more fundamental like let's say if there's a child you will probably say if you're hungry then you can stay here for some time drink water and then go but the machine will not, not learn it am i making sense so instructions is something like this algorithm this learning will try to approximate the instructions but the interpretation can also be given by the instructions which cannot be given by learning that exactly what i mean full interpretation uh did i make sense anif but yeah i mean of course learning will give some rise rise to give rise to some in, in you know some interpretability but not always that's why instruction of human being that a human intervention comes up that's what exactly what i mean okay on if it's clear okay uh aman is it is not is it not learning kind of instruction on the fact that it chooses instruction based on data yes no human beings have a supercomputer in mind we have a sub level computer we don't know what machine learning will do when it has a quantum computer or supercomputer we are working a low level computer okay that's why it's learning less it's learning an approximate thing not the exact thing okay human beings have much it's it's better it's much better okay and you know for example we work on several principles also like we know walking in a straight line reduces the hypotenuse you know reduces the distance so exactly this is where the instructions comes up you probably can add a loss function to the whole machine learning model to tell that it should be on a straight line this loss function additions these are instructions and that's exactly where the interpretation comes up am i making sense aryan aman so it's a it's an interplay of me instructions and learning just learning will not hold you have to probably make it into an instruction based learning and that's exactly we we'll learn some, something called reach regression is there it's an instruction based learning okay where you instructing that the number of parameters should be less optimized okay rahul is saying obstruction is obstruction either it's a dustbin or uh, a tree so why you define okay no not a tree but a human being let's say a self driving car is there if a human being is pedestrian is standing there the car should not move not either left hand side nor either right hand side but if the car knows that okay it's a it has storm has happened last night and therefore it's a dustbin and therefore i should move and cross it and move ahead okay so that's where interpretation comes at the interpretability am i making sense rahul did you understand so this is a difference Say, could you please repeat once again? I couldn't get it. A self-driving car. If you have a self-driving car, if it's a dustbin, it should not stop. It should go, uh, surpass it, and go and continue its uh, movement. That's exactly what you do if you drive a car, right? If there's a dustbin randomly, you do not stop there for a lifetime. But that self-driving car will actually not understand the difference between uh, a pedestrian and a, a human being and a dustbin, right? if it sees a human being it will probably stop for the way you should stop you should not ever take over a human being because it may you may kill the person but for a dustbin it doesn't really matter you may go past it so this is a difference to the algorithm it looks obstruction to both so it does the same thing but to human being there's interpretation about the understanding of the difference okay rahul did you understand okay yash raj okay anuj can you make and if machine efficient he has same as human brain efficiency it depends i really do not know the answer uh, to this there is something called turing test okay so turing test is something that yeah this is something uh, you should read about something called turing test whether a machine can compare to human brain or not okay yashraj rahul okay yashraj is talking to rahul okay uh, so all the routes clear can you move ahead to the mathematical part now everything clear guys can you move on to the next part 
give a thumbs up super okay great so we are good to move so the first part of understanding was what is machine learning and the difference between instructions and learning Now the next question is that, the next question is, how do we learn? If we know how do we learn, we will know how to make a machine learn, right? So rather I should ask, that this leads to the question, what are the different kinds of learning? Okay, I will come to that, just give me a minute. So what are the different kinds of learning? How do we exactly learn? So we'll talk about two different kinds of learning. One, supervised learning. Unsupervised learning. I will tell you the exact difference between these two. By an example, let's take the example of when the time you have started learning writing to alphabets. So your goal is to learn A and B. Now, let's say you do not have. So what 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 is there that your let's say your you know let's say your mom is was teaching your is a uh, mom is teaching a child and. She, and she has written, I will come to this. So people do not know about parametric inference and non-parametric inference. Anu, I will talk about that after I explain supervised learning and unsupervised learning. And the answer is no. Uh, that is not the same. So let's say a mom uh, has started to write like this. I'm not going to talk about reinforcement learning right now. It falls into known. And you should first learn supervised learning, unsupervised learning before into reinforcement learning. Okay, there's a three like kinds of A. Let's keep this away. And B. the B. Now, a mom took this and just suddenly went out for work. Her friend has called her. Okay. Now, the kid doesn't know which is letter A, which is letter B, but the case, so this is the data, okay? So, I'm doing a thought experiment with you, okay? But the kid can clearly understand that this are kind of similar and these are kind of similar. But the kid doesn't know what it is. So there is data. The kid knows that this data, this, this kind of characters are similar and this kind of characters are similar. But the kid doesn't know a machine doesn't know what's the difference. The 
this is exactly what unsupervised learning is. You have data. You have data, but you do not know what the data corresponds to. Like there is no response variable. Now, when will it become supervised? There's a slight thin line difference between unsupervised learning and supervised learning. Now the mom comes back after talking to her friend and she tells child. So let's call this features because it's a feature of this data set. It's a, like a, the, fe the feature of A, the letter A. The mom come, comes back and tells the child that, you know, this is letter called letter A. Bolo letter A. So that's how they teach, right? And this is letter B. What it is? Letter B. So exactly this is how it, she teaches. And that's exactly why supervision comes up. She tells you, okay, this, each one of them is letter A and each one of them is letter B. So this is the exact difference. So when there's a response variable, there's an attachment like this data corresponding to this variable, this extra response, then it is called response variable. This is called supervised learning. So data, so let me give you another example. This is an example I have given in the state of utilization course. So this is a difference. So let's say there is, I will give two more examples. Let's say there is, you have taken a different kind of wine. Okay. So let, let's say there are hundred different kinds of hundred wines and hundred wines consist of three different types of wines. So you're calculating two chemical compositions, the alcohol concentration, and let's say a phenol concentration of the wine. Okay. And let's say flavonoids, three variables. These are chemical compositions in alcohol in the, in the wine, okay, in any wine, different type of wine. And there are, let's say the three wine types, wine type, type one, type two three types. So here you have data of each one type. Let's say it's one. Then you have data for two. Then again, you have data for one and it goes to a hundred different type of wines. Okay. Now, okay. Just let's uh, just, let's just take alcohol and flavonoids. Okay. Let's just take alcohol and flavonoids. I, I the reason is this, I'm, I'm going to share something with you. So this is a data set. Did you understand the data set of this? The second data set? It's the first data set example. Did you understand the second data set? There's alcohol person, alcohol and flavonoids and wine. These are different wine types. See, let's say here is 10%, here is 15%, let's say something. Here is 40%, here is 17%. So different wine types. Yeah, wine type similar, same wine type will contain similar alcohol and flavonoid. Let's say 11% and 15.5%, let's say. Example. So if you plot this, you'll probably get, let's say you plot alcohol versus flavonoid here. You will get, let's say I give rate for wine type one. I'm giving an example. Let's say this. You get another group like this and you get another group like this. So the red is the red is one, the green is two and the blue is three, three wine types. Okay. So when you plot this, the flavonoids and the alcohol on 2D axis, this is how the exact data set looks like. Now, if I give a new alcohol and phenol flavonoid percentage lies here, you'll probably say it's wine type one, right? Now you are learning the wine type based on the flavonoids and alcohol percentage. Now, if I remove this entire column, you do not know this. Let's say I delete it. And what I do is I 
So when I do this, then you don't have these labels, right? So all these labels turns out to be black. You don't you just know this data is two data sets. This is how exactly you plot it. Right. So here you can see that there are different behaviors, like there are three different clusters out there. You can see that with your eyes. But you don't know which type is exactly which. You know that there are different behaviors. You know there are different type of data sets out there. So what is the difference? The difference is in one case, you have the supervision. See, this is what is alcohol and flavonoid, and this corresponds to one. Wine type one. This is what alcohol and flavonoid is, and this corresponds to two. So you are learning the one, two, three, the wine type based on the alcohol and flavonoids. In the other case, where there is the, that that data is not there, not learning, but you are watching the behavior. So the difference supervised learning. Is nothing but modeling the relationship between the features, the alcohol and flavonoids, or in this case, the pictures of A with the response variable that the, your supervisor, your teacher, your mom is trying to teach you. This is what they're trying to teach you. That's why it's called supervision. And this is what you have to learn the data. This is what they are teaching you. So you have to learn this new concept based on the data. Unsupervised sorry for the bad handwriting. Where the unsupervised is nothing to teach, but is to observe and seek the pattern, the difference. You have to observe. So in this case, they are making you observe, okay, the teacher is making you observe the difference. But in answer, is actually actually observe and find the pattern and see the difference. And that's why it's behavior, you're seeing the behavior, the difference, you're observing it and seeking the pattern. No one is teaching you that. So you're seeing that there's a difference, you're observing and seeing the difference between A and B collections of letters. But no one is teaching you that is letter A and letter is letter B. So the goal of unsupervised learning is to seek the best optimum behavior, the pattern out there. Okay. That's the idea. The behavior, the pattern. What exactly I mean by observe the pattern. And there is no one teaching you. There is the data set and you're observing the pattern. But in this case, they're teaching you there is a data set and this data set corresponds to this. It's a, there's, a, there's a teaching going on. There's a supervision going on. This exactly is so. These two rewards are important: the relationship and the behavior. Do you understand the difference, guys? Yes or no? Yes or no? Do you understand the difference? Any doubts out there? I would love to clear your doubts. Did you understand yes or no? I didn't see much raise of hands or yes. I should get an yes. I'm working hard to teach you. So you should be making sure I should be making sure you learn. And you should be making sure you understand that you lo are learning and understanding. It's our duty, both of our duty together. Okay. So I will just call out your name. Akshita, Nev, Avazrao, Chandan, Chirag, Deepti, Nilesh, Niyati, Rahul, Rishita. Sai, Sangbed, Sanjana, Shinjini, Sriranjini, and Yashra. Yes, please ask questions. What's the difference between supervised learning and instruction? Exactly the difference between learning and instructions. It's exactly the difference between learning and instructions. Here it's saying these individual paths are data out here, and it's saying this is the right path. This is the right path. This is not a right path. This is not a right path. So you are teaching them by this each individual data that this is correct, this is not correct. So based on that, it is learning. Did you understand, Rahul? So by by learning, I essentially mean supervised learning. By unsupervised learning, you are learning the behavior, the difference, and the patterns out there. Any other questions? Good question, Rahul. 
Any other question? Another example of supervised learning, unsupervised learning. Let's say you see dogs and cats for the first time in your life when you're a kid. No one told you that is a dog, that is a cat. But you clearly know that there's a difference between the dog, the set of dogs and the set of cats, right? But you don't know whether they're different or not. Now, how do you know the difference? You know the data, you have the data that, okay, dogs have this kind of nose. Cats don't have black nose. Do cats have black nose? I'm, I forgot. So let's say dogs have black nose usually. Cats don't have black nose. Cats have a different kind of structure of face. Cats have whiskers. I forgot whether, I think dogs do not have whiskers. But essentially what I mean is that dogs have probably long, cat has pink nose, yes, you're right. So you see this data, you see the difference, but you don't know, you see that there's clearly a difference. You see that there's a clear difference of behavior of two different groups, but you don't know which groups correspond to what. If someone asks you, then what is that? You will not be able to say. If someone asks you, show me a cat, you will not be able to say that is a cat. But if someone teaches you that, okay, this group belongs to a cat, this group belongs to a dog, and then ask you a different, to show you a different dog, creature, a different animal, ask you, what is this? Then you will say, oh, this is the cat, or this is the dog, because you have to learn the features. So, do you understand that there is a data and there is a response that it, someone trying to teach you? Supervised learning teaches you the, gives you data and, and makes you understand the, learn the relationship. In this case, this is not there, but this data may be there, and they're trying to find you probably the relay, the behavior, the behavior of the different groups that is inherent. Okay, got it, guys. Did you understand? Everyone? Okay, good. The other learning, there's another learning called reinforcement learning, but that is a different thing. I'm not going to teach you right now. Yes, that's a different thing. Now, what's next? So we have understood that what are the different types of learning, supervised learning and unsupervised learning. Now we should come into the mathematics and this requires probability and statistics and, and knowledge of probability and mathematics. The question is that, how do we represent? So this is exactly the next step to mathematically, this is whatever I taught you, this is exactly that can be taught to a kid, okay? What is machine learning? Machine learning for kids, for dummies, for this can be taught to those people. Now, if you are from statistics or mathematical background or engineering background, this is your responsibility to know these things into details. That's exactly where you become uh, from a dummy, from a kid to a mature statistical and machine learning mature person. Okay, so we have to understand now how mathematicians, how statisticians, how scientists want to model this in a proper way. Let me tell you this. So what exactly is data? Every data can be represented as a collection of numbers, right? A tuple of numbers. So remember, every data can be represented. This is the first law as a vector of numbers. Like, let me give an example. Let's say a cat picture. This is not a cat, but I'm just, it's a cat. This cat picture, if you unravel it, the whole data set of this cat picture can be represented as the, there's a pixel, there's a pixel, each is, is a pixel. And each pixel corresponds to if it's a color, it's let's say a black and white image. So black and a white image is nothing but an intensity, an intensity of gray, black. And how much black and white is there that exactly determines the intensity. Okay, if you learn how pixels are made, if you will understand this. So each value is a number, each number inside the pixel is a number. So let's say this is 12 cross 12, so it's a 144 length number. Where so this can be represented as a vector. Okay, so every data set can represent a vector of numbers, and that's exactly why linear algebra becomes very important. Linear algebra becomes very important. Oh, no, the whole uh, dealing with data is equal to dealing with vectors, and vectors, the law, the, the mathematics of vectors is nothing but the math, linear algebra. Therefore, linear algebra becomes very important because every data is equivalent to a vector. 
every data point is equivalent to a vector. Am I making sense? If you want to say also this is a cat, you just add another data of cat here. So it becomes this picture plus a cat. Is it is it understandable? Therefore, to deal with data, linear algebra becomes important. Because it's a math of vectors. Let's say you want to add two cat pictures or you want to stretch two cat pictures. Essentially, it's nothing but a linear transformation on the whole image. So it's a linear transformation of a whole vector. So every data, every data point is equivalent to a vector. This is something very fundamental to understand. Every data point is represented a vector. And to deal with the data, to deal with the mathematics of data is essentially to deal with the mathematics of vectors of numbers. So therefore, to deal with the mathematics of data is equivalent to dealing with linear algebra, learning linear algebra. Is it clear why linear algebra is important for data? For every single data, you collect numbers. Every single data point, every single data point corresponding to sequence of numbers, essentially with a vector. So you cannot do without linear algebra. Great. So that's why. Essentially, in fact, this is exactly how linear algebra was discovered. Okay. Linear algebra was discovered by solving linear equations. Okay. Let's say 2x plus 3y plus 5z is equal to 2. 3x plus 9y plus 10z is equal to 5. 4x plus 17y plus 3z is equal to 15. So they saw that these data, this Two, this three, this five, this three, this four, this ten, this four, this seventeen, this one, this all these things together determine the relationship. The x, y, z is not really important. So the three of x, y, z, the three of x, y, z, and what they are left with was his numbers, and that's how matrices were born. These numbers together made a matrix. That's how matrix was on. Essentially, they focus on data. They saw that it's two, three, four, this two data set is important. This data is important. And that's why how vectors and all these things came up. Okay. That's why linear algebra is very important for because we're dealing with data. Okay. Now what's next? This is first thing first. Now let's me go to the what other mathematics is important. Let's go to supervised learning. So what is supervised learning? Understand it very carefully. Okay, focus. What is supervised learning? So let's take this cat example. So you have this vector, and there is another column of cat. So this is the first pixel. This is a you know this is a this is the data of cat, right? Pixel one. This is pixel two. This is pixel one forty four. That is the data in that the the data of that intensity in that. This is cat. This is the response that we are going to teach you. Same thing. It, if it was a, it was the same thing. Probably I was going to teach you a. Okay, just the same thing. Or a. So based on this pixels, you want to learn which is cat, which is a, or something like. I mean, just I hope you got the example. Or dog or b. So what we are trying to do, we are trying to find the relationship from this to this. So how do we mathematically model it? Simple. So this set of numbers are nothing but the left hand side, the features, let's call it x curl. It's a vector, right? So x curl 1 for the first and this is y1, the output, the with the response, the thing that we are trying to teach you, that is y, y1, the one corresponds to the, the data point, like which cat you are corresponding to. So let's say there are 15 or 100 cats out there, or the cats and animals out there. And you are taking this 100 data set. So if you remember, this it corresponds to x curl. This corresponds to y. Okay. Everything clear till this point of time. I'm going to slowly step by step you through the mathematics. Clear? Everything clear? 
Yes. Very good. So this is a vector. This is a single number. Vector, single number. Vector, single number. Now we are finding, trying to find the relationship. Now, how is relationship defined in mathematics? What is the way to define mathematically define relationship? Functions. Functions. So that's what is that? So this y1 is nothing but this y is nothing but a function of this image. Right? This is cat, let's say. A function of the image. So therefore, this feature to response is nothing but a function from the features. So understand what are these features? Each of these belongs is a it's belongs to a real number to the 144. That means it's a vector, 144 dimensional vector, each of them. So this cat and dog, so therefore, this is nothing but a function from a real number to the 144. This is the image, the possibility of the images to the set cat and dog. Did you understand? So the response variable is y. This is nothing but the y. The y is nothing but a function from the r to the power 144, the, th that feature, that image. Image is nothing but a set of 144 dimensional vector, right? From, from that to cat or dog. Did you understand, guys? Okay. Now there's a doubt that what did you mean by the vector of numbers? So, what exactly? You know vector, right, Rahul? Yes, sir. So, what uh, can you please explain your doubt? I couldn't get uh, every data can be represented as a vector of numbers. That's so, the same like data about you, any kind of data. Let's say your address. Okay. Your address your birthday, every data about you, it can be represented a vector, right? Let's say your address can be written as, if you remember, when you fill up the form of your, let's say any, let's say you're filling up a form for a bank account. So there's a box like that, where you write, let's say my address is 29B, there's a space, SK, Malotra Road. Okay. So each data, so whatever the data I collect, it can represent so like n dimensional vector. Then I write you, then you write your name. R A H U L, then space, then N A. So whatever you use data is a collect, it can represent a vector. Like B can be represented as a, you know, let's say a, a unique number, but it's a it's a data, it's a number, right? You can express everything as a number in some way or the other. Like you can express B as the fifth alphabet. So you write F5L or somewhere. Or you can just, did you understand Rahul? Do you understand? Like every data, whatever the data you collect, it can represent a vector. An n dimensional vector. The n can be arbitrarily large, but it can represent a vector. Did you understand? Yes or no? If not, please tell me why you didn't understand. All of you understood this, whatever I have talked about right now. I've talked about every data can represent a vector. This is an important aspect. And what is the meaning of, you know, relationship, modeling the relationship? Okay, I will call out the names and ask. Um, Akshita, Aman, Anev, Avas Rao, Chandan, Nilesh, Niyati, Rahul, Rishita, Sai, Shambhid, Sanjana, Shinjini, and Sriranjani. Sri Did you understand all of you? Please say yes or no. This is very important for me to understand. Because yes. I'm building a course for you guys. If I'm building a course for you, I need to know whether you're understanding or not. If you're being quiet, the course will never get developed for you in the future or your friends. 
So you have to be very serious about this and participate in this. It's a, this is a list I can expect from you. OK, thank you. So. Uh, hi, Srijit. Yeah. So in the case of images, uh, doesn't it make more sense to represent as a matrix instead of a vector? Because dimension of the image can vary. So where which you're right. But addition, so all the mathematical operations you do on a matrix is one to one relationship you do on a vector. Now, if you want to generalize for every single data set out there, that's why you're turning into a vector. So a matrix is essentially a vector. Okay. If you see so if you remember a matrix is nothing but if you remember the set of matrix, I don't know whether you know linear algebra or not. A matrix is also set of all matrices a vector space. The dimension of vector space is n square r to the power n square. So essentially it's a vector. It's behaving like a vector. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's actually a vector in existence. We are just seeing it in a different way in a visualization format. Just like an image is a vector, we are seeing it in a different format. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we want to map it to us. So the goal of any mathematics, whatever you learn, the goal is to generalize to a single simple form so that we can you know, do many things on it. Okay. That's the whole goal of mathematics. Trying to find the pattern and generalize to a single definite form. Okay. So that's called abstractification. Abstractifying and understanding and knowledge. Okay. Okay. All of you understood this. So the goal of supervised learning is therefore so what is supervised learning a supervised learning is nothing but you have data you have the features x curl you have the response y it's not a vector this y is nothing but a function from r to the power n or it cannot be r to the it can be like some set s for example if i collect your address or your eye color your weight and your height and C and hair color. Let's say I collect this data set. Your eye color, your height, your weight, your hair color, and which country you are in or which continent you are in. So this is a function. So this function is from it's not r to the power, you know, whatever it's, it's not r to the power, but it's categorical. So this categorical variable, the two kind of variable, continuous and categorical, numerical and categorical. It will be red, blue, whatever, brown, brown, black, or whatever. These are numerical. So it's a different set. So it's r square cross, let's say red, blue, green, cross, blue, black. Let's say this two continent. The set Africa, America, Asia, Australia, Antarctica, 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 sorry, Arctic. Yes. I, I'm sorry if I forgot forgot all the continent's name. Antarctica. Antarctica, yeah. Art, yeah, I'm sorry. Anyways, that's not the point. Um so this is a set, right? S to T which you are trying to do. So okay. it's essentially a function we're trying to model from a domain to a codomain, S to T. So the goal is to find so S to T. So that's why functions are important. To understanding knowledge of functions and pre-calculus is important because this mapping is important. The goal, so now there's a problem. The problem is this, that with the same eye color, same height, same weight, and same hair color, they can do, uh, you know, correspond to two different continents. Let's say one is from America, one is from Australia. Okay. Same data, different continents. So the data is actually not, you know, data doesn't correspond to a function. Because the same data can correspond to different outputs or similar data can correspond to different outputs, right? Same height can correspond to different weights, right? That's yes. it. So therefore, the, the understanding is this, that the data doesn't, the data itself could have lead to a function. Let's say you have 
yes the data could itself lead to a function for example let's say you have two variables like hair color and weight height you have three data sets let's say blue height is six feet black let's say five feet red 5.5 feet so let's say this is i'm just say africa asia and let's say america if this was a data set the, it's already a function almost defined right the reason it's different because blue six feet can also correspond to australia so the reason why i'm saying this is that the data can correspond itself correspond to a function right but it is not i mean the goal is not the goal is to find an approximate function so go, the the data is itself a mapping not a function so goal is to find a fun you know find a function that is close to that mapping close to that behavior closer not behavior relationship what's the closest relationship so the goal of supervised learning is to find that f hat the closest possible function that replicates a data relationship the relationship between x curl and y so this is x curl one this is y one this is x curl two this is y two x curl n and y n did you get it guys yes or no important any doubts out there the goal is to define that function okay what is that closest possible function what is the closest possible function now how to define it's a different thing i'm going to talk about that so i'm not going to talk about unsupervised learning now because we, the course next day will be fall following in supervised learning so i will talk about unsupervised learning when i will doing unsupervised learning later on what is the goal of unsupervised learning but let's talk about supervised learning the supervised learning is to find this function properly what is the time when did we start okay it's almost one hour but yeah we will continue for some time so this is the goal of supervised learning let me give you a simple example the so we will learn a lot of examples out there but simple example is okay the so difference is regression and classification now regression and classification difference in regression and classification is this then let's take that data set of wine so you have alcohol you have flavonoids you had one wine type so the wine type was categorical but instead of wine type we had another predict another response wine price this was this would have been numerical so for wine type the function was from r2 to like 1 2 type 1 type 2 type 3 these are numbers like let's call it t1 t2 t3 these are categorical for wine price it will be a function from R2, the alcohol and flavonoid percentage to R. Let that is R positive, R greater than because it's price, it cannot be negative. So when the output is numerical, it's called regression. When the y variable is numerical, it's called regression. When the y variable is categorical, it's called classification. Okay, basic simple. So classification is this. And regression is this. All of you got it? Simple stuff. Yes. Yeah. Others, thank you for responding. Everything clear? It's very simple. To revise our goal is to find approximate function of this. 
and the data is actually a mapping. You have to find the function that represents the mapping to the best. Okay. Now what's next? The two questions left. Few questions left. Number one is the next question is that how to find that if given a data. That's the best question. How to find that if the closest if had let's say. Second question is that why is calculus important? Where is or why is probability or statistics used or important? We will understand this. If not today, entirely we will surely understand it by the next day. Now, let me explain to you that. So these two are related to each other. OK. We'll explain you that first. How to find that f? How to find that relationship? Let me give you, so this is exactly how it developed. They didn't, they didn't try to learn the way we are learning today. The, the way theory was developed, it was not like the way we are learning today. It was developed via examples. They saw data, they wanted to have a quick, they understand, understand what will be that, you know, what will be the relationship and they made models out there. So let me give an example. Let's say you have a height and data, height and weight data set. Okay. So you have, let me write the column version of it, the vector version, the matrix version of it, the vector version of it here. The people out there. So we are collecting for people, 100 people, let's say height and weight. This is how exactly it's the vector. Uh, these two vectors. Let's say we are trying to predict height based on weight. Or let's say, sorry, weight based on height. Let's keep it y axis because that makes much more sense. Weight based on height. Okay, simple, simple example. So let's say there is a data set, and you probably see that it's kind of like this. Now, what's the goal? Like, the goal is to find an approximate good relationship. That is this. This seems like a good relationship. This also seems like a good relationship. This also seems like a good relationship. This also seems like a good relationship. It seems, also good, seems like a good relationship. Now the question, there are two folds of question. And the question is that this also seems like a good relationship. Okay. Now which one is true? Which one is true? Which one should be the case? That is, we are asking the question, oh, how to find that f hat? Now we will discuss how to find that f hat, how to find that relationship. So you have a data. This is not the domain of deep learning. Okay, Deep learning it works in a very different way. The philosophy. The philosophy is make it the most complex function, and we'll try to extract the pattern. But here, we are trying to understand from the data set what it can be. So we know that f is a function from, let's say, r to r. That's an, that's an example. We have the data. We know the function is that. You have to find that. We have the data set. That is x1, y1, x2, y2, dot, 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 xn, x100, y100. Now, what do you do? So this is a very complex, there can be multiple functions out there. So this is what a very important concept called in problem solving called divide or make it easy. Okay. So what we do based on the domain knowledge we have, based on the domain knowledge we have, we assume that fx is of the format, a linear function. 
because you want to make the make the modeling easier, make the problem easier. We have a problem to solve that find the best effort, but we cannot find the best effort because we don't know. We don't have any place to start. So we take an example. We take a simpler case. Now, how to take the simpler case is based on experience and domain knowledge. Simplify. And research. And exactly all the different kind of research. The, the, if for decision tree, this function is different. For for different kind of for different problems, just like this research has gone into this because those different type of modeling has come up based on different applications, different data types, and different domains. Okay, so this is where the research has gone, and different type of models are there. Okay, experience and domain knowledge. So we simplify. It can also be simplified right like this. What if someone says that it's a quadratic function. Let's call it p plus qx plus rx square. Simplifier. Simplify. So this is linear. This is quadratic. The first step is simplification to a modeling assumption. So this is model assumption. So we have. So first step is model assumption. The model, the functional form of the model. An assumption. I will talk about it more. The second is, so we have, we don't know the function. So there should be some unknowns in the function. So the model, the functional form is itself being validated, or there are some unknowns out there. So to find that function, we assume the function so that function, unknown function is being supported. There are some unknown things out there. The unknown things in this case where A, B in this case, in this case, P, Q, R, those are unknowns. Because the model itself is unknown, we simplify the functional form. In this case, it was P, Q, R. So therefore, the goal is to find the best possible f is equivalent to find the best possible p hat, q hat, r hat, or a hat, b hat. Do you understand? Since we assume that the functional form is this, the, the problem statement to find the best possible f hat is equivalent to saying, find the best possible p hat, q hat, r hat in this case, second case, or in the first case, A hat and B hat. Did you understand, guys? Yes or no? This is the first step. Yes? No, maybe doubts. If you have doubts, you should ask. Just give me a minute, guys. Uh, think about it. I have to just go to the restroom. Yes. Any doubts, guys? Um, Akshita, Aman, Anif, Chandan, Nilesh, Niyati, Rahul, Shranjini. Any doubt? Okay. So, do you want to continue this next day? 
uh, or do you want to do this today? If you want to continue the next day, you can write continue next day in the what in the chat because yeah, it may be too much for you for one day. Okay, sure. Okay. Okay, I will do a poll. Okay, next day. Please do the poll. Please participate in the poll to understand. I hope we can get the poll. Three votes for next day, two votes for today, four votes for next day, two votes for today. Five votes for next day, two votes for today. See, okay, I think uh, it won't. Okay, next day I will continue. So next day I will be talking about, we'll start with this. I'll talk about uh, each of these different things, how to find F hat and Y calculus and while probability statistics is important. And then I will go on to linear equation. Okay, thank you guys for joining. If you enjoyed the class, write a boom in the comment box. B double O M. Boom. Thank you, Rahul. So, uh, will you please uh, give us a brief about this course? Like the, we know the contents, but uh, will we be discussing problems? Yes. So this is Sunit. So this is a very good question. So this is I'm um, uh, thinking. Okay. So I'm trying to see the other courses out there taken by IIT and trying to understand. Yes, we will give you assignments. And we will try to make it clear. The ish, main issue is near the, that this is the first year that has the course is happening. So I'm taking this opportunity out more. The course is directed more towards understanding ML than actually preparing for the entire examination. Okay. Because I really don't know what will come in the examination. No one knows. And what kind of questions will come? So this is very hard to say. But yes, there will be problems. The problem solution, problems discussion. May not be or maybe discuss. I'm not sure about it. But as of now, there is no such case of discussion. If it's discussed, it will be added. This will be extra for the course. Okay. But yes, if the students need it, we will do everything for the student to help them learn. But understand more than gate, this is more about like learning machine learning. That is in the gate. Okay, the machine learning thing. Since we do not know what kind of questions will come, we will give the questions that we think or I think it's important. But except that this the 80% goal is to learn the machine learning concepts and the 20% goal is to solve problems that we give. So we will use problems from, we will check out problems, we'll make problems, we will check out problems from other courses that IIT has taken inside or MIT and all those people have taken best colleges out there. And also we will use books that are important for the course. Did you answer your question, I think? But if you think- Okay, sir. The, Assignments are needed, but yeah, we're also trying to plan some coding stuff, but all these things will be extra. Okay. The, I mean, it will be given for free extra the course. That is not promised. Only thing that is promised is I will take two classes every week and then for the next two, three months and make you understand the whole, every topic out there coding thing and assignment assignment will be given. That is also promised one set of 10 problems or at least some problems will be given every week, every lesson. Okay. Not week because, uh, you need to learn a lesson to understand uh, some topics and then answer the question. So, but everything else, if the students need, that will be given extra at the same price. Nothing will be extra charged for the course. Okay. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. My pleasure. All the best. Thank you for being a part of this today's class. And yeah, I will talk about this. I will send the course details in the WhatsApp group. Okay. Uh, Chandan and others. Nilesh, uh, I will give you one link. Just give me a minute where I have talked about a lot of books. Okay, I will send the link in the uh, in the chat okay in the whatsapp group okay thank you for being a part of this course and i will send you all the details about the enrollment soon bye bye